What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the Adidas and Sneakers and Stuff Datamash NMD. Thanks so much for tuning in today guys. Make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. Also make sure to give me a follow on Twitch which is just my name, Seth Fowler. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it. About a month or two ago, Sneakers and Stuff finally opened its first US store in New York in the Meatpacking District. I love Sneakers and Stuff, they have a great selection and their shipping is kind of insane, and especially when it's coming from the UK to the US and it only takes like two days, which blows my mind every time. I went to the Sneakers and Stuff in London when I was in London for SneakerCon and I've gotta say it was just a really excellent experience. Experience. But now we've got the store in New York, which I've got to say, if you haven't stopped by yet, make sure to do that because right now they have this crazy restock going on that's been going on for about a month. They have this crazy selection of Boost sneakers from like a year ago. I actually filmed the sneaker shopping vlog there, so if you guys want to check that out, make sure to click the link at the top of the screen. But while I was filming that vlog, I ended up buying a pair of sneakers, and that pair of shoes, if you haven't seen the vlog, is the Datamosh NMD. Now here's the sad part of the story, and this part kind of bummed me out. Um, when I bought the shoes, I thought I was buying a size 9.5 because I thought that was the smallest size that they had. But when I actually got the shoes in hand about a week later, um, or I guess now it's like two or three weeks later, but uh, I looked at the tag and they're a size 10.5. So um, with NMDs in general, they already fit a little big. So a size 9.5 would have been a stretch for me regardless. So the size 10.5 is uh, definitely too big. So I'll have to figure out something with that, which is a little unfortunate because I do really love this pair. But to give you guys a little bit of backstory on this sneaker, this is the Sneakers and Stuff Adidas collaboration on the NMD. This shoe released in a pack that dropped last May. There was this colorway and then a more orange and green colorway. I personally kind of prefer the more orange and green colorway, but this one is also pretty dope as well. For the first like five to six months of the shoe being out, the resale was unbelievable. It was like $600, $700, and this is back when Boost was starting to lose a little bit of its resale value, so it was pretty incredible that a shoe that was limited, but not crazy limited, was actually in that price range. But now you can buy a pair of these for like $300, $350, depending on the size and the colorway. Some pairs even go all the way down to $250 on StockX. It just really depends on the size and the color that you're looking for. But with all that aside, here it is, the Adidas and SNS Datamosh NMD R1. Jumping right into the upper of the sneaker, this is a standard NMD R1, so you've got a full one-piece prime knit construction. As you can tell, the prime knit pattern of this sneaker is made up of primarily white, darker blues, grays, and then lighter blues. It's got this really cool sort of chunky digital camo look, and one of the really interesting features of this prime knit pattern is that if you actually look on the inside of the prime knit, the prime knit pattern is the same prime knit pattern you have on the digital camo NMDs. So apparently what happened is SNS on this collaboration liked this pattern better than the standard digi camo pattern, and noticed that it was on the other side of the prime knit so they went with this instead. And honestly, I tend to agree with them on that. I think this pattern is actually a lot cleaner and a lot more interesting. Moving back on the sneaker, you've got your standard NMD R1 lace eyelets, which aren't really attached to anything other than the prime knit. This time around, they're in white to match some of the prime knit pattern and the laces themselves. Moving up to around the ankle of the shoe, you have your regular NMD sock-like ankle collar, this time around with blue and white alternating stripes. I think out of all the prime knit sock-like ankle collars that Adidas has utilized on any of their models, the NMD R1s is my favorite. I know that's kind of a very specific thing to like, but I think they got it right on the first time around. It gives you just the right amount of stretch. It's not too constricting. It feels really good on foot. That is, if you get the right size, otherwise it just kind of flops around. Moving inside the sneaker, just like any other NMD R1, you've got this gray insole, which kind of really isn't an insole. It's just kind of a really thin piece of material with cut throughs to the boost. As I'm sure you all know by now, the NMD R1 doesn't have much in the way of padding anywhere on the upper. It's just pure prime knit on your foot. So essentially, you're just kind of wearing a sock over top of your sock. As for fit, like I mentioned before, the NMD R1 PKs or NMD R1 Prime knits do fit a little bit thick. On all the other pairs that I've had of this shoe, I went down half a size, so for me I'm usually a size 9, but I went down to a size 8.5, and, and that's purely because the material is so stretchy, you don't really have any way to lock your foot into the shoe because the laces don't really do much on this sneaker. So if you're planning to grab a pair of these for yourself or any other NMD R1 prime knits, I don't think it hurts to go down half a size, but as always, if you have a chance to try on the shoe first, make sure you do that to make sure the sizing is right for you. I uh, didn't really listen to my own advice and just kind of put the shoe on my foot and then threw it back in the box. Just just because I was too excited and wanted to buy it, so um, that's my bad. Continuing back on the sneaker, you've got your standard NMD R1 heel cup in white, and then rounding off the heel, you've got this gray pull tab that says the brand with three stripes in a couple different languages. Moving down the shoe, you got your NMD R1 boost midsole, which in my opinion does feel really nice, but isn't the most comfortable boost midsole around. I still personally think it's the Ultra Boost, other people have different opinions, but 
I think it's the Ultra Boost. Sneakers and stuff kept the midsole simple with white plugs to match with the Boost rather than trying to match with the upper, which I think was a nice touch. And finally, moving to the bottom of the sneaker, you've got this all white outsole rounding off the look. Overall, the Adidas and Sneakers and Stuff NMD R1 is actually a really clean sneaker. Not that I was ever debating that it wasn't, but I'm still a little salty that I got the wrong size. To be fair though, the box does say nine and a half, so it's not all my bad, but uh, I really should have checked before I bought them. As I mentioned before, if you are trying to grab a pair of these for yourself, resale right now really isn't bad. Now that we've got the review out of the way, let's put these guys on the ground and put our feet next to them and see how they would look if they were on feet. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you think of the Datamash NMDs and whether you're planning to eventually get a pair for yourself. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to me, Seth Fowler, if you want to see more content just like this. And follow me in all other forms of social media. The links will be in the description below.